The world of advertising has changed. Radio, TV, and newspaper revenues have declined drastically. Why? Because businesses have realized that advertising return on investment isn't what it used to be. So what can we do about it? Well, that's easy. Advertise online. Own a local restaurant, real estate agency, or even a national retail chain? Whatever your business, Inravio can get your message out there. And we can do it at a fraction of the cost. Call today and see the difference for yourself. This isn't TV. This isn't radio. This is Inravio.com. Inravio.com. show two guys and a chick i am chuck this is bonnie hello we've got matt we've got jacob and we've got uh, kevin in the booth hiding kevin's so skinny you can hide behind a pole and nobody will see him right kevin <laughs> thought you were gonna call me johnny bravo johnny bravo <laughs> i know he's got the new haircut so right yeah so what'd you do on the weekend there bonnie how was your weekend? I remember most of it. Remember <laughs> most of it. <laughs> I don't think so. Yeah, I think I do. I remember most of it. I, there's, I beg to differ. I don't think I did anything that I don't remember. I've specifically asked a couple of people if, there, if I did anything I need to apologize for. Really? Yes, I did. Yeah. You didn't ask me. Did I do anything I need to apologize for? We'll talk later. <laughs> You'll get the memo on Podio. Oh, joy. No, I had a very good weekend. Yeah? Yes, I had a blast. What you remember of it, you had a blast. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How about you, Matt? What'd you do? I partaked in some in radial extracurricular activities. <laughs> <laughs> Partaked in some of Inravio extracurricular activities? Is that what you said? Yeah. Yes, it was definitely not a company field trip, but the company was definitely there. And it was, proud. It was. <laughs> and, and what? And proud. And proud. <laughs> and proud. <laughs> if everybody had field trips like that, then people would love their jobs. You even have videotape of me enjoying myself and joining in the show. I do. I saw it. It was posted. I made sure it was only 15 seconds. <laughs> well, it wasn't much longer than that, yeah, was it? Yeah, it was like a minute 45. Was it that long? Yeah. But then I forgot Bonnie has the, the TMZ footage of my David Copperfield. Yes. Dance. David Copperfield is here! Because, Chuck, you were David Copperfield this weekend with your magic. Yes, I was doing some magic this weekend. Yes. Yeah, making things appear and stuff. I sent that video over to Matt. Did you? I did not post it. I didn't want to embarrass him. No, I don't him. think we should. Okay, well, we will. Okay. I'll leave that to you. If you choose to, then that's fine. But I have it. So just but remember But all that. in all, you had a good weekend, right? <laughs> yes. Everybody enjoyed? Everybody, everybody had a good one? Mm-hmm. Can't wait Kev, to go back. What'd you do over the weekend? You know me, I'm kind of uneventful. I just went over to my neighbor's no, house really? for a drink and some food. You had some drink and some food? Yeah. Nothing special, nothing crazy. A little barbecue in the backyard. You know, he's. At the house. He says that, I'm uneventful. But then, you know, he'll come in. Then one he's day jumping out of a plane. Exactly. <laughs> Nothing, yeah. nothing, nothing. Jump out of a plane. Jumping out of a plane, save the world. You know, nothing big. <laughs> Typical stuff, just another Saturday. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. What are you doing? You're making noise. <laughs> Jacob, what did you do this weekend? Give us your rundown. Uh, again, not much. Had a few uh, family friends visit for the weekend from Germany. That's cool. All right. Basically living with us for four days. Okay. That is definitely cool. 
just kind of hung around, enjoyed the weekend. Big three-day weekend for most, right? It was good. All right. So moving right along. You know, I printed out some stuff. I didn't even bring it to that. Go figure. That worked out well, didn't it? Yes. All You're right. so prepared. I am so prepared. My goodness. I was overly prepared. So uh, moving right on to stupid news. Do we have our, are we not going to do our thing? Okay, so, <laughs> poor Matt, I messed him up. <laughs> okay, in Beijing, China, okay, teenagers in Beijing, China apparently are going through this whole big problem of being um, lonely. Okay. Okay. And they, they don't really know what to do about it, okay? They're um, being lonely. Maybe. They are lonely, and they don't really know what to do about it. Okay. They're, I, I don't know why they can't meet people, or maybe they're having a hard time meeting people. I don't know what the issue is, but they are very lonely, and they're trying to figure out ways to... And these are children? These are like teenagers. Teenagers. Teenagers, young adults, that kind of thing. Okay. Uh, college students, that sort of thing. Okay. So they're trying to figure ways to fix that. So there's a number of different things that have been happening. There's a new restaurant out that um, they put a big giant stuffed animal at the table with you if you're sitting alone so that you're not alone, you know, so you're not lonely having dinner. It is. It's kind of sad and pathetic. It's kind of sad. Yeah. Well, this other group of teenagers decided that I'm not sure exactly what they're, fi they're figuring they're going to accomplish, but... They were at a music festival in Beijing, and they showed up dragging heads of cabbage behind them. Dragging heads of cabbage. Yes. This, apparently, they now have pet cabbage. I mean, this particular person has one, I think, on a think roller about, skate. Think about that. We have pet rocks. Remember pet rocks? Yes. We don't have pet rocks and anymore. And what was that other thing? The sim thing? Remember you had your own little sim world, you had to keep it living? Yeah, but it was a video game. Oh, you're talking about the little Tamagotchis. Again, comes from Asia somewhere. Probably because their people are lonely, so they have fake pets. A little Tamaguchi. Yes. Now, this particular person, I don't know if you saw that picture, no, um, has their head of cabbage basically on like a roller skate, so it's got little wheels, which I think is kind of funny. Because some of the other pictures I saw of people dragging their cabbage behind them on a leash. It. Yes, it was just like dragging on the ground. So I'm thinking they're shredding their cabbage as they're going along. Shredded lettuce. So they're making like coleslaw as they're exactly. going. What are you doing, making coleslaw? <laughs> this particular person was, was concerned about their cabbage. I want to make sure that it, it stayed healthy and, and you know didn't get hurt and bruised and that sort of thing. So they put it on a little roller skate. got to be careful. You don't want your cabbage got, to get bruised. Yeah. Got little wheels. Got little wheels. <laughs> Dragging my cabbage around. Oh, God, they're weird in Beijing. What can I tell you? They, um, they, this one person said, uh, I have more interest for my cabbage than I do my parents. I feel it understands me. Really? That's what this one person, I don't know if it's a, a girl or a boy, doesn't say. It's just a 17-year-old, and I can't tell by the name, but feels that it understands this Understand person. Understands me. So um, how... Stupid do you need to be that your vegetable understands you? Yeah, when your vegetable understands you, then there's definitely an issue there. Yeah. Yeah, that's definitely something should be, yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. Should be encountered. Yeah, the psychiatric, psychiatric professionals are saying that a cabbage companion can be a healthy form of therapy if you're feeling lonely. Really? <laughs> so that's what I need to do. You know what? We should do that and just send the camera crew out with somebody. Dragging just a cabbage? Drag a, drag a head of lettuce around the soup. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of looks would you get? Hey, Matt, we should have took that over to Fire Island this was weekend. Drag some head of lettuce around. Right? Yeah, well, you have to be careful what... There you go. See that? There is a drag queen. You have to be careful of what kind of vegetables you take there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Then jump right on that. <laughs> well, you might be trolling for something. <laughs> All of a sudden, you'll get a little bit of a nibble, a That's bite. Right. You, Whoa, I got a big one. Oh, my God, my cucumber. Exactly. That's, no, can't have pet cucumbers there. <laughs> my cucumber. <laughs> <laughs> Poor little cucumber. Well, here's one. I got one because, uh, you know, Jacob said he had some people visiting from, uh, 
from Germany. Okay. So uh, this one I thought was kind of interesting. Apparently, the head of one of Germany's most prestigious newspapers has revealed on live TV that he voted twice in the European elections because he didn't know it was illegal. How do you not know it's illegal? Did he at least cancel out his vote? Please tell me he voted once for one that side, once been, for the that other. That would have been really funny, right? Yes. Yeah. No? No, I'm guessing that's not the case, but... Uh, I want him to have voted twice. Yes. You know, in Giovanni Di Lorenzo. Does not sound too German, though, right? No, Editor not at in all. chief of the Highbrow Weekly, Dizit, was apparently unaware that he had done anything wrong when he told the talk show host that because of his dual Italian-German citizenship, he cast votes for both countries. So, yeah, he did. Oh. He canceled himself out. <laughs> <laughs> what an idiot. Okay. He goes, I'm allowed to vote twice because I have two passports, he said. Oh, well, maybe it's not illegal. I mean, technically, you should only be allowed to vote once per person. Not once per country. But why country. would you have two passports? You have two separate names? Don't you have one passport per name? Yeah, I think you only have one right? passport per name. Matt's shaking his head, so I'm thinking, yeah. I don't know. See, I don't know a whole heck of a lot about foreign travel. I mean, I just met someone from another country just this week who showed me his driver's license, his international driver's license, which I didn't even know was possible. Well, we knew that. We typed a couple up, didn't we? <laughs> No, no, international, and his thumbprint was in his license. Oh, yeah, is that the guy you were saying? Oh, yeah, well, now they're getting a little bit more uh, yeah. involved. Yeah. yeah. I didn't even know what the heck I was looking at on this thing. I recognized his picture and the fact that there was a thumbprint in it. The rest of it meant nothing to me. That was it. You lost your mind over the thumbprint. Uh, well, it was cool. It was All right. definitely cool. All right, so well, I'm going to stay with Asia since that's where I started. All right, stay in over In Seoul. They've come out with these new parking spaces, and they're for women only. Really? Yes. They, Why is that? <laughs> they um, they want to make their capital, which is Seoul, more female friendly. So um, they're spending ninety-five million dollars making women-friendly Seoul. $95 million, they got to do this? They, they want to make women feel more safer, more comfortable, more welcome in the busy city. Um, so part of what they've done is they've made lady-friendly parking. More safer, more comfortable. Yes. So it's lady-friendly parking. The women in, in Seoul apparently are upset about it because they've painted the, the stripes in it pink. And there's a little lady in there with, of course, a bell-bottom skirt on it. Oh, the little anime uh, type thing? If, you know, a lady with like a little oh, oh, bell gotcha, type gotcha. skirt. Gotcha, gotcha, yeah. And apparently... So that's only for them? Yes, it's just for women. Okay, now I have to say this because, you know, I know the questions, it's out there. Yes. What about if you're, if you're gay? Did I have a spot for that? The, well, you could be a lady that's gay. Um, well... It's for women, so if you happen to be a gay woman, then it's still fine. You can park there. Gay man can't be there. Well, that's not a woman. Even when they dress like it, not a woman. Not a woman. Mm -mm. So if they got a little spot with a Tinkerbell, you can't park there? That's for the gay men? <laughs> they may come up with that eventually. But what's funny is the women are pissed about it. They don't like it. Why well, would think? Really? I'm surprised you think that women are not happy about it. You of all people. But uh, women are happy. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> They've made the spaces wider and longer. Oh, so now it's because they're fatter? Is that what they're saying? No. They, I, well, myself, I, when I first read that they made the spaces wider, I thought, wait a minute, why is that? They think women can't drive. They can't get into the spaces. Well, my thought would be because, you know, they probably got kids. They got to open the door and deal with the kid. Very narrow. Getting the kids out and stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, apparently nice what the women are mad about is that they've used this old-fashioned way of looking at women with the pink and the woman in a dress. That's what they're upset about. Really? Yeah. The women in a dress is what they're upset about? And the fact that they use pink. So they should have used blue and what? I don't know. It's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. Basically what it comes down to is exactly what you said. They just can't be happy.
All right, well, here, how about this? How about Rock Hill, South Carolina? An emergency respondent in South Carolina has been accused of using emergency lights on his vehicle in order to help deliver pizzas faster. Uh oh. I don't think that's a good thing. Well, you know, it's not a bad idea. When the fire trucks are in the firehouse and there's some downtime, uh -huh. you might as well use them to uh, somebody's advantage. You can deliver pizzas in a blink of an eye. So apparently Thomas Reed of Rock Hill Rescue, Rescue Squad is accused of attaching emergency lights to his own car and activating them while delivering pizzas for Pizza Hut. Well, as the... Uh, the customer of Pizza Hut, I would be thrilled, but I have a feeling that the town's not going to like that. Well, I'm guessing Pizza Hut's hating it, too. Mm. Yeah. Pizza yeah, Hut did so. not comment, but uh, he was wearing his Rescue Squad t-shirt while delivering them. That's a plus. Well, maybe if you put little pink and blue bows on it and said he was delivering a baby pizza. Then it would have been fine. That's right. Caution, pizza on board. They would have let you go a thousand miles an hour. As long as you're doing your uh, makeup in the rearview mirror. Okay. Um, we should probably take a quick little break. Okay. And when we come back, we'll talk about um, a first grade class that was not allowed to um, hold their talent show. They were accused of being racist. Really? First graders, yes. So we'll take a quick little break. And then we'll okay. uh, come back with that and so much more. Brown and the Killing Devils, alternative progressive rock like you've never heard before. Over a million views on YouTube. New York City Village Voice says Paul is a gifted singer, songwriter, and musician with one of the best progressive rock bands on the planet. LA Underground Music Exchange calls him the only modern American band to cover every genre well. Pick up the albums Black Widow Tears, Red Spider, and The Wizard's Dawn, now on iTunes. And get to Facebook.com forward slash Killing Devils to keep up with the latest info. Hi, this is Tony. And I'm Dan, and you're watching... Dear Dad. Oh, wait, you're not watching it yet, but you should be every Thursday at our new time from... 7 to 8? That's the new time. Dear okay. Dad on Enravio.com. Only in Enravio.com. Where else could it be? Tune in. On the internet. For over 60 years, Hanson Carpet has put the customer first, providing only the finest quality products and service. And Hanson Carpet is so much more than just carpet. We also carry a wide selection of window blinds and shades, and our licensed and insured technicians can service any of your flooring or window covering needs. Browse our huge selection of laminate, carpet, linoleum, vinyl, and tile. Stop by our showroom today or visit HansonCarpet.com. No matter what your project, Hanson Carpet has got you covered. And we are back. Yes, two guys in a chick show. Welcome back. Hello. So continuing the stupid news, give me this rundown now. Okay, in Fargo, North Dakota. Fargo. Mm -hmm. That's a funny name, just for that. <laughs> uh, the elementary school was, uh, they had to cancel their talent show because mm -hmm. uh, the first graders wanted to perform YMCA, you know, village people. YMCA. Yeah. Um, but the... A, p a particular parent, I don't know which one, but a parent said that the performance was racist. Racist. Correct. Really? Why was it racist? Because of the Indian, the black guy, 
It was bad for construction workers. Well, the black guy was a policeman. So I don't think that that was particularly a problem. I think it was probably the Indian, most likely. You think it was the Indian? Yeah. In Fargo? I think that was it. Because everything else was a job. It was not a... Fargo is North Dakota, yes. Yeah. Um, everything, all the rest of the characters in the village people, that was a job. There was the, uh, there was the policeman, there was the cowboy. Um, so basically it was racist because he was unemployed. He was an unemployed Indian. No, because he was an Indian, so he had the, the full, you know, the old-fashioned way of saying Indian with the, the big full feather headdress and the, you know, all the rest of the leather stuff that they would wear. Do you want me to go there? <laughs> so you should have been standing there with a carton of cigarettes, oh. is what you're telling me, right? <laughs> I mean, you know, come on. Personally, I think it's ridiculous. Uh, it is, because when you see, it's his heritage. You know, if he's an Indian, you, he's, you see the headdress, the whole thing. It's you know, a band. He, it was a talent show, and it's a band. They were not making fun of it. It was something that actually happened, and they were going dressed up as something that actually happened, which was not right, a bad thing. Which was thing. a band. They could have been going as the Bee Gees. For, uh, you know, it wouldn't have made a difference. Well, apparently. Uh, well, how about this? A man who tried to run down a pheasant on a highway with his new car so he, so he could take it home. Run down a pheasant yes. so he could take it home. So he could take it home. They're it's, not that big. Mm. You run it down, you're going to squish it. I mean, nothing but feathers. Well, that was his, that's what he was claiming for. Now, uh, this is, by the way, in China. So we're going back to across the pond over there and then some. But he instead crashed and sent his wife to the hospital for minor injuries. Okay. Yes. Well, yeah, I mean, I find the whole thing ridiculous. He crashed into a roadside banner beside, you know, a yeah. barrier besides. Do you know how big a pheasant is? It's smaller than a chicken. Is it? Yes. Give me a hands. What do you got? It's, it's about yay big. It's, it's little... got long feathers on the, on the back end. Right. But they're small. They're only about this big. Well, apparently he wanted to eat it, which is why he was running well, yeah. it over. He wasn't going to catch it to take it home as a pet. Again, not enough yes. there to hit it and have something left. Unless you get an amazing aim and just run over its head. Yes. Well, suspicious of the claim, officers reported hearing the man's wife grumble that our new car was just ruined over chasing a pheasant because a man originally claimed he was blinded by the bright sunshine that afternoon and lost control of his vehicle. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Definitely stupid man. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Brand, um, brand new car, shot to hell. In Avon, Connecticut, there's a couple that are accusing the local school district, uh, Wellesley College, and pretty much anybody else that they can come up with, of basically making their three daughters, uh, well, indoctrinating them into a cult. They, that's what they're saying. Really? What kind of a cult was this? Vivid video? <laughs> How old were they? Um, 22, 19, and 16. Yeah, vivid video. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Um, I... Was it a family movie? They're saying, <laughs> no, not a movie, a cult. <laughs> well, whatever. They, were, they got into the cult, but the cult wanted them to do a movie. <laughs> they're, they're saying that the, the daughters experienced uh, severe personality changes, including becoming flat and distant. Flat and distant? Flat. Maybe the guy ran over them with the car. Maybe one of the daughters' name was Pheasant, and he ran did over her, and that's how she became flat. Did they lose their boobs or something? I don't know. It's ridiculous. And where was this? This is in Connecticut. In Connecticut. Yes. Oh, um, my goodness. Yeah, they, sudden and severe personality changes. They've become reclusive, what? secretive, and non-communicative. And what was the cult? They're, they don't know yet. They're saying that um, they were indoctrinated into a religious cult that promotes martyrdom and celebrates death. Oh, great. <laughs> Sounds like a fun time down at the pizzeria. Uh, I, I think the whole thing is ridiculous. Basically, what it comes down to is the parents were upset because, um, and I lost the uh, the statement in here, but how they, uh, 
they were not going with like science stuff and they were they were talking about magic and superstition and oh here is um they were talking about superstition, magic, and non-scientific anti-intellectual worldviews. They would discuss spirituality, spirituality, numerology, astrology, dreams, mysticism, and uh, signs and symbols and all that kind of stuff. Um, I'm thinking that chances are it was a portion of the class, like uh, social studies or something like that, where they were talking about other beliefs of something in history. And mom and dad just decided to have themselves a hissy fit. And probably something like they're teenagers and they don't want to talk to you. And that's just normal. And get over it. Hence the, what you should be doing is beating those kids. Ugh. I just think it's amazing that they, you know, really. Spirit, witchcraft and yeah. occult. And yeah. Well, how about this one? Okay. This guy apparently is organ man. He's a 19-year-old man. He's accused, well, he's not accused. He caused a three-car crash when he fainted while holding his breath as he drove through a tunnel in Oregon. Why would you hold your breath while... Well, that's the question. Apparently, both vehicles struck the tunnel walls before a pickup truck hit his Camry. Four people suffered life, a non-life-threatening injuries. Police said he had been cited for reckless driving, three counts of reckless endangerment, and fourth-degree assault. They also say some people hold their breaths in tunnels as part of a game or a superstition, and he fainted because he held his breath too long. I didn't actually know that that was possible. Yeah, normally once, you know, you, yeah, you wind up breathing. Personally, I think that's a crock, but that's what the report says. Actually, maybe it is possible to faint, but you, I know you can't die from holding no, your breath. No, you can't die, because as soon as you pass out, you'll stop breathing again. Right, yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, California is about to pass a law that uh, should make you very, very happy. Oh, okay. Yes. Topless girls all day. Why? Topless girls all day. Yeah, topless girls all day. You can wear a bikini to work. <laughs> Is that what it is? No. And thongs, will, you'll get you a raise. Is no. that what it is? No. no. Sorry. Not quite that happy. Oh, how happy am I going to be? <laughs> um, after September 16th, they're going to allow driverless cars on the road. That, you know, cars that drive themselves, they're going to be allowed on the road in California. Do they have cars that do that? They're in testing. They're, really? Yes. In California. So you could be sitting in the back and it drives itself? Correct. You so could be sitting in the front putting your makeup on. Really? Mm -hmm. Doing a thousand miles an hour? That's right. There you go. See, I know what happens, see? Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah, so after sip, sip, Now, sip, keep, yeah. in mind, keep in mind that the, nobody knows the backstory to that, but it wasn't more than, what are we talking? Was it 10 years at this point? Probably. Probably more than that. You think it was more than 10? Yeah. About 10, maybe 12 years ago, um, at dinner with friends, I came up with the suggestion of something very similar. And I got laughed right out of that restaurant. I'm still going to laugh. I'm sure you will, but when I run you to the list of all the good things that happened from that. Well, it's something they've been working on for a very long time, and actually Google is a big part of it. Ah, there you go, see? They're very forward thinkers like we are here at the Enravio Complex. So after September 16th, if you're driving in California and you see a car driving down the road with nobody behind the wheel, don't freak out. Don't freak out and call police, as you wouldn't uh, after police received a call from 911 um, from a South Main Street woman who caught out of the corner of her eye what she thought was a deceased raccoon being dragged off by her dog in the house. As it turned out, the dog had found a brown stuffed animal, not a raccoon. Okay. Sharp. <laughs> uh huh. Bum, bum, bum. Well, speaking of Is that sharp. Is a raccoon in your pocket? Hmm. Go ahead. Speaking of sharp. Yes. There is a man in, um, I think he's in Austria. Yeah. I, I believe. Or I'm assuming it's a man, who knows, who decided that he wanted to sell the word the. The word the. Yes. 
Is there a trademark on the word the? I don't know. Get uh, get the uh, legal eagle uh, Nick on the phone. Let's find out. <laughs> well, what he did is he put it on eBay. Really? Yes, he put a little scrap of paper with the word the written on it in ballpoint pen. Okay. And he put it on eBay. Really? Yes. And, and his, the bid is up to? Actually, well, it, the, the it, description for it says, uh, handwritten with blue ballpoint pen on a torn piece of reflex A4 paper. This versatile word can be used in literally thousands of sentences. For example, the dogs have escaped again. I will buy some meat from the local deli. What's the time? Can you put comments? <laughs> Ideal for any situation, this fun-loving item fits perfectly in the palm of your hand, wallet, or purse. Looks great sitting on a MacBook Pro and emits a mysterious beauty when leaning against seashells. It's the quintessential addition to any potted plant, and if your piano needs decorating, this word is likely to create a poor to mediocre vibe for onlookers when they see it placed in, on your instrument. Oh my yeah, god. Yeah, I got something you can place on my instrument. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, apparently it must have a relatively good sense of humor, or I certainly hope so anyway. Because you know how you can ask questions? Sure. Well, um, somebody put, is registered post included? So is it free shipping? And the answer was free registered post, free national post, free international post, free, free galactical and universal post also available. Okay, he's sitting there wearing <laughs> his tinfoil hat as we speak. <laughs> <laughs> Put down. It goes on to say, it's the grammatical gift that keeps on giving, uh. with half the money from this sale being donated to the Cancer Council. Really? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Someone else asked if it needs batteries. Weird. Anyway, it did not sell. You should type in there, the ride to the nut hut will be free. <laughs> yes. Unfortunately, it did not sell. He put it up for 99 cents and it didn't go. Oh. Now, I had to go See, look for this because... Was there a reserve on it? That's I don't know. It's over. But I had to go look for the actual post because when I first found the story, the first one said that it was up to $100. Hmm. Then I found another one that said it was actually at $10,000. Really? Yes. Exaggeration. But it ended actually with zero bids at zero all. Zero bids. Yeah, yes. who's going to bid on that? Because I already have, so personally, if I was going to sell a word, it wouldn't be the. What word would it be? Boob. Like. <laughs> like. Like. I mean, come on. If I, had to, if I had a word that I had to get paid for every time somebody said it, like would be the word. Or um. Or um. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Oh, Tay, Panky. All right. Um, all right. So we need to know, take a, a really quick little break, okay. and then I have a. Uh, when we come back, I have a story about a, a international. Well, a pilot. So we'll talk about the pilot when we come back. Okay. And we've got stupid. Uh, we've got the uh, the email bag, mm -hmm. and we've got the impom imponderable of the week, and. It's the last week of the month, so what does that mean? <gasps> Gay Bar Steakhouse. Gay Bar Steakhouse. Yay! All right. Play? So we'll be back shortly. <laughs> See you in a little bit. Right after this.
Transmission of lice occurs from being in the wrong place at the wrong time. Like catching a cold or a flu. You have guaranteed peace of mind in every bottle of Got Lice because all of our products are completely natural. And organic. But strong enough to cover all your lice removal needs while being safe and effective. Our professional technicians are specially trained with our exclusive proven technique to successfully comb out head lice. We come right to your home at your convenience. Whenever you want us. We bring everything needed to perform a successful and complete comb out while eliminating your head lice. And we leave you with our exclusive complimentary products to use for the next 10 days following our treatment for free our technicians also check all family members who've been exposed to lice please visit us on our website today at gotlice.co or feel free to call 24 hours a day seven days a week at 646-257-0121 of advertising has changed. Radio, TV, and newspaper revenues have declined drastically. Why? Because businesses have realized that advertising return on investment isn't what it used to be. So what can we do about it? Well, that's easy. Advertise online. Own a local restaurant, real estate agency, or even a national retail chain? Whatever your business, in Radio can get your message out there, and we can do it at a fraction of the cost. Call today and see the difference for yourself. This isn't TV. This isn't radio. This is in Radio.com. Yes, you guys in the chick. Hello. Hashtag. Hashtag okay. we're back. Okay. So is um is a commercial flight does that mean the flight that people are on or does that mean like uh like UPS or, or FedEx or something? Commercials people are on, yeah. Commercials okay. Well, I did a little yeah. uh, a little research on this story that I was going to talk about um, while we were on the break, and thank goodness I did because I was going to really badmouth this pilot. Okay. Um, but now I'll only badmouth him a little bit. Okay. <laughs> um, he's a commercial pilot. He just happened to be riding on a commercial flight. He wasn't actually flying the commercial flight. Okay. He was riding on it when the 62 small rubber sacks of cocaine he had swallowed burst in his stomach. Oh, that really bites. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm thinking oh, I don't the... want I don't want pilots who do that. No. It wasn't Jet Blue, was it? <laughs> no, I don't know who it was. Um, it was Spirit Airlines. <laughs> Because it's got an S in it. Luckily, it was only one of the 62 bags that popped. Uh, only one? Yes, not oh, all good. of the 62 bags. So did he, did he survive? I guess he Yes, did. he's in the hospital. He's He has a um, police guard outside of the room right now waiting for him to get better enough that they get can Get rid of the him. other ones? <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Waiting for him to pass the rest, I guess. I'm thinking, why? You're a pilot. Uh, they don't really check you that much as a pilot, do they? Check you? Yeah. Like drug chest you? Um, no, I mean, what you're carrying in your bag. As we, a pilot, don't he, you? He wasn't carrying in his bag. It was carrying I know. inside of him. But shouldn't he have? Carry it in his bag? Correct. Why swallow it? Hmm? Yeah, no, they got to go through screening the whole thing, don't they? Yeah. Just like everybody else? I think so. Oh, okay. Oh, they still go through it, but they cut the line. Okay. All right. Well, I don't want pilots that do that at all. So forget it. If you're going to do that, stay home. (laughs) That's what I have to say about that. I don't want to be flying anywhere thinking that my pilot may have, you know, be sitting on a couple of condoms full of cocaine. (laughs) (laughs) That sounds like a Saturday night for most people. (laughs) Out of fire out, sitting on a couple of condoms full of cocaine. (laughs) 
<laughs> now that would make a great song, wouldn't it? Okay. It's funny. <laughs> Sitting on a couple of condoms. Okay. You got something? I have nothing. Oh. What, what did you want from me? I thought you had more. Oh, okay. I, I do. All right, we're, I've got a Florida. We're past the stupid news now. We oh, gotta I got get. A, to... I got one more. Okay. I got one more. I love All this right, one. All right, give us one more. This is we... my Florida one. The Florida one of the week. You gotta have a Florida story. Uh, it seemed like we got several every week. Yes, I know, but I didn't. This is okay. the only. This is the first week I think in a long time I haven't had a single Florida story. So I've I've got one. All right. Um, this one man, he apparently his wife got or his girlfriend, whatever, got really upset with him. Um, and he ended up going to jail because his the girl was upset because he was watching porn. That's basically what it comes down to. Okay. Get used to it. Well, yeah. But what really was funny was he got upset with her because she called him gay because the porn that he was watching was transgender porn. So to get back at her, he threw his shoe at her. <laughs> it would have been better if he would have hit her with a purse. I know. It turns out, uh, with further further uh, investigation, it was a work boot. But still, <laughs> I thought it was hysterical that he threw his shoe at her. He threw his shoe at her, and the high heel hit her right in the head. <laughs> oh, that's just too much. All right, so what do you got? I have a picture. Oh. Several of them. So Matt's going to grab the pictures. This is, uh, you know, a little uh, from the email bag. Okay. So a little bit of a Memorial Day weekend email bag. So uh, we had the, uh, the Blue Angels at, uh, at our beach here on Long Island. <laughs> Stop it! <laughs> Take it out, pull it down, Matt says. <laughs> Dude, that's a Saturday night right there, if I've ever heard <laughs> Don't they call that California long stroking? Oh, gosh. <laughs> oh, okay, so go on. Anyway. So anyway, yeah, we had the Blue Angels, so we got some pictures from the Blue Angels um, for you. And we also have the awesome news story of the week. So here's, I'll give you the awesome news story. So this is the ah moment. Now a lot of people I think are gonna get, uh, get a kick out of this one because I know, happen to know a lot of people out of firefighters. But uh, firefighters in California were shopping at a Costco over Memorial Day weekend and had to leave the store on an emergency call before they could reach the cashier. When they returned later, however, they not only found their goods waiting for them, they also found the receipt because someone had footed their bill. That's nice. And a good Samaritan wrote, have a good weekend. It was signed by Air Force wife. That's very nice, cool. Right? Yeah. It's a very nice thing. Very cool. Matt's ready for your picture. Matt's ready for my picture. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, we got uh, the Blue Angels. Picture of the Blue Angels there. Mm, cool. And that was here? Uh, in New York? I'll say it's here, but it's not. <laughs> okay. Now, we got several pictures, so I don't know if Matt wants to grab a couple of different ones. But that was an awesome uh, time at the beach. I know Doodle Lips was there. Oh, was he? I believe he was at the beach. He was watching uh, from his boat, taking some pictures and some video, I'm sure. I'm surprised he didn't post any of that. He would have had it right up on Facebook, I thought. Mm. Post, post, post. Get it right up there. Thank you, Matt. See, he's got a video he's going to send us. Oh, okay. Yeah. So he's going to send us a video of the Blue Angels this past weekend. But you ready for Gay Bar Steakhouse? Okay. Got well, I, no, I promised last week that we were going to talk about the the uh, the big searches in each state. Remember, you could tell a lot about a state based yes. on what they search on the internet. So I figured so we'll just this pick... week's state was. Let's uh, we're going to go with Kansas. 
Kansas. Kansas, okay. We're not in Kansas anymore. No. Um, the three major searches in the entire state of Kansas, all put together, is hoof and mouth disease, how I met your mother, and toupee. That's the big things that they search for in the entire state of Kansas. Believe it or not, hoof and mouth disease, how I met your mother, and toupee. Those are the biggest things really? searched for on the internet. Is there a rampant thing of ho hoofing mouth disease? Right? Does it make you lose your hair and you need a toupee? I don't know. And then you got to stay home and watch How I Met Your Mother on Apparently. TV? On reruns because they're over now? That's what I'm thinking. That's just weird. Where do they get these searches from? Well, Google knows all this. I don't understand why people would search something like that. <laughs> Because apparently that's a big deal. I mean, on Long Island, the big search is probably Lindsay Lohan, right? Because you always want to know what that broad's doing. But I still. don't know. We'll have to wait and find out. Next week, we'll do another state. So, moving right along. Moving right along. Well, here we are at Gay Bar and Steakhouse. So, how about this one? We're going to give everybody a shot at this. So, you guys at home, you can uh, chime in. Um, check Mr. Big. Okay. Um, we're gonna, you guys can chime in and you can tell me what you think, whether this is gay bar or steakhouse. Okay. All right, so this one is called the Silver Slipper. What do you think, Bob? Gay bar. Matt? Gay bar. Jacob? I'll have to go to the gay bar, too. Kevin? Johnny Bravo? Wait, what's it called again? Silver Slipper. I'm gonna go with gay bar. All right. Everybody's going gay bar, but I'm going to go with steakhouse. Bum, 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 bum. It is a steakhouse in Boston, Massachusetts. Wow. <laughs> the Silver Slipper? Please. you got to be kidding me. All right. The Eagle. Gay bar. Matt's been there. Yep. It's, it's in Bayshore. <laughs> it's in Bayshore. <laughs> hey, all right. Yeah, actually, it is. Close to home. It is. How do you know this? I've heard of it. I've heard Matt talk about it. Hmm. It's possible I was there many moons ago, but I'm not sure. Note to self, check Bonnie's emails regularly, okay? <laughs> I'm going with Matt because I've heard him talk about it before. Unless it's another place called the Eagle, I'm going with its gay bar. Going with its gay bar, okay. Mm -hmm. All right, Jake. <laughs> gay bar, yeah, you gotta go with, you gotta go with, he's an authority on that. Kev? Gay bar. Gay bar, okay. What about Doodle Lips? What do you what do you think of Doodle? He's not sending me nothing yet. Mm -mm. Let's see. Go Gay Bar. It is the Gay Bar in New York City. 61%. Got that right. Fire and Spice. How about that one? Oh. Fire and Spice. It just seems very obvious that it's gotta be a steakhouse. You think so? Which leads me to think that it shouldn't be a steakhouse because it's just too darn obvious. But I'm going steakhouse. Matt, fire and spice. I'll go steakhouse. It's got S's in it. Jake? Steakhouse. Steakhouse. Kev? Gay bar. Gay bar. <laughs> All right. Let's see what we got. Fire and spice is a steakhouse Yay. in Phoenix, Arizona. 50% got that wrong. All right, how about this? Burkhart's Pub. Steakhouse. Gay bar. Gay bar. Steakhouse. Steakhouse. Let's go. Steakhouse. Doodle says steakhouse. Let's go steakhouse. Gay bar. Gay bar in, Al in Atlanta, Georgia. Okay. <laughs> You've been there too? <laughs> All right, what about that one? How do you say Cal that? Cowbobas. Cowbobas. A Mexican irony, gay bar. Just for the irony, I'm going to go steakhouse. Cowbobos, so meaning like they do like the breast of cow. I don't know. It's oh. C-O-W-B-O-B-A-S. It could be cowbobas. I don't know. Cowbobas. <laughs> 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 I do the lips of saying Probably gay Probably cowbobas. 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 Cowbobs. Babas. Cowbobas. I'm going to go gay bar. Gay bar? Steakhouse. Steakhouse? Let's see. Uh, I haven't answered yet. What do you think? Um, what do you think? What do you think? Gay bar. 
Gay bar? Yeah. All right, let's go gay bar. What do we got? It's a steakhouse. Uh, I'm wrong again. My goodness. I'm doing terrible. Club Gold Coast. Wait, where was that steakhouse? Does it say? It did, but it's gone now. It did, but it's gone now. Club Gold Coast. Club Gold Coast. Club Gold Coast. Um. Doodle, what do you think? I'm going steakhouse on that one. Steakhouse. Everybody's. I'm picking gay bar. Everybody but Kevin says steakhouse. Okay, Kevin's going gay bar. Okay, let's see. Steakhouse. It is a gay bar in Detroit, Michigan. Wow. I'm wrong again. Oh my goodness. Leave it to frosted tips. <laughs> What's that? Frosted. Oh, tips. Frosted you said tips. tips. <laughs> ah. It's the Johnny Bravo thing, I'm telling you. Buckhorn Exchange. That's not a gay bar, that's a bathhouse. Buckhorn Exchange is a bathhouse? <laughs> <laughs> if you, you rub my back, I'll rub yours. Is that how it works? <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, I've gotten almost all of them wrong. I'm going steakhouse. I would go whatever Matt says. <laughs> what are you saying? No, whatever Kevin says. <laughs> That's true, right? <clears throat> what do you think, Doodle? What is it? What are you saying, Matt? What do you I'm think? I'm going to go. I, it sounds like it should be a steakhouse. That's why I'm going gay bar. <laughs> ah, okay. Okay. What do you think, Jake? I'm going to follow his lead and go gay bar also. Johnny Bravo? Steakhouse. All right, let's go gay bar. Steakhouse! Steakhouse in Denver, Yes, I got Colorado. one right. <laughs> got one right. <laughs> I'm almost 50-50. Doodle Lip says it sounds like something on the North Shore. Yeah. Woohoo! All right, one more. Camp Ticonderoga. Yeah, right? It's a, it's got to be a steakhouse. You think? Yeah. You know, Ticonderoga is a pencil. Is it really? Is it? Yeah. The random things you know. No. Yes, Ticonderogas. They're those uh, those yellow pencils from way back when. Yeah. Aren't all pencils yellow? No. A lot are, but there's Ticonderoga pencils. Yes. All through high school, all through middle school. That's right, Ticonderogas. Pencils. Oh, it's a brand. Yes, it's okay. a brand of a pencil. So what do you think? I'm going steakhouse. I'm gonna go steakhouse. Steakhouse. Everybody's steakhouse. going. Steakhouse. Everybody's going steakhouse. Mm. We're all gonna be wrong. <laughs> it's fort, not camp. Come on. And the answer I'm is. I'm going to say gay bar and see what happens. Steakhouse. Steakhouse in Detroit, Michigan. All right. I'm up to 50-50 now. 50-50. What did Doodle say? Steak. He was right. The one before Gold Coast. Okay, so how about this? Landmark. With a C. With a C. Not an S. Smark. <laughs> so I'm going to go with um, the simple choice on that one. <laughs> it's got to be a gay bar. A gay bar. Landmark with a C, right? Landmark with a C, With a yeah. C, yes. Steakhouse. Steakhouse. We're picking gay bar. I'm going gay bar. Yeah, I'm going gay bar on that one. And it is bring... Steakhouse. Steakhouse in New York City. Ah. Oh. We're going to have to go there now just to get steak. Yeah. Ew. Okay. This next one. The Cork and Cleaver. Hmm. Sounds very nuts and bolts. I was just going to say, sounds very nuts and, <laughs> nuts and bolts. <laughs> I'm saying steakhouse. Cork Gay and bar. Cleaver. Steakhouse. Cork and cleaver. Well, you know, steakhouse. if it's a steakhouse, they're, they're referring to the wine and cutting the meat. Yeah. That's true. Yes. Um, but do you really do wine with steak? Is that a little bit Yes, absolutely. Thing? No, red wine. Really? Absolutely. Um, but I really, really want it to be a gay bar. <laughs> With that name, I just want that name to be gay bar. 
So I'm going gay bar, just wishful thinking. Just for the hell of it. Yes. Going gay bar. Cork yes. and cleaver. Johnny Bravo? I said steakhouse. Oh, did you? Okay. Let's go steakhouse. It's a steakhouse in Phoenix, Arizona. Ding, 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 ding. I wanted it that way. I'm sorry. Okay. Well, anyway, so moving right along, what do we have at the Paramount Theater besides um, everything? I know. Well, this weekend is Buck Cherry. So we've got tickets. It's Friday. Yes, it's this Friday. We have tickets for the Paramount Theater to see Buck Cherry. I don't know who's opening for him, but it doesn't matter. It's going to be an amazing show. Um, just go to the contest tab and uh, just click on the, the win link and you'll be entered to win. And the, uh, the winners are actually going to be picked tomorrow. So you've got a very, tomorrow, very limited noon, amount of time. Yeah. Yes. So let me ask you a question. Uh, Jake, have you ever seen Buck Cherry? Do you, uh, no. Have you ever listened to Buck Cherry? I believe I have, actually, yes. Yeah, what uh, do you think about them? Uh, yeah. Matt likes them. He's giving me a thumbs up. What about you, Kev? Yeah, I've heard of them. I've listened to some of their stuff. They're not have bad. You? Yeah. What do you think? They were big when I was in middle school. You know what I'm getting, though? I'm getting a lot from, like, older people and younger people. Everybody seems to like these guys. Because it's almost like a David Setzer orchestra like it's got that kind of demographic like Brian. it's got the range it's got the young you mean the Brian Setzer kids. orchestra yeah so it's got like that kind of, don't play me <laughs> I'm just trying to relate that's all <laughs> no but it's got like that range it's like the the new kids that like old and the old yeah. generation that kind of likes a poppy feel. okay it's okay kind of got that kind of a following I was yeah I was kind of surprised the uh, the real Real broad spectrum that these people uh, people really like in Buck Cherry. So yeah, cool. Get to that contest page and sign up for Buck Cherry. Um, free tickets. We can't go on Friday. I would no. I would love to go to that just to check it out. Yeah, so, <laughs> Buck Cherry does sound like a gay bar. <laughs> Buck Cherry Gay Bar Steakhouse. <laughs> and you know I'm gonna leave you with a joke, man. Oh, gotta, we have a new one. Got it. I might, but I think Matt's already got this one. Um, so what else do we got? Uh, what are we doing next week? What's the story? We got anything big that we're going to do? No, not yet, but uh, we're definitely going to, you know, we'll do another state and see what's going on there. And, uh, you know, I'm sure we'll find some other interesting stories. Some other to talk stupid about. news and stuff Oh, like God, that. yes. All right, Matt. No so shortage. I think I probably told you this one. You probably already know this one. But you know the, the number one pickup line of the gay bar is? <laughs> this is an old one. Do you know this one? It's all my joke. Huh? I know it works for me. What's yours? I can't tell everybody. Because <laughs> then people will be using it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got Dolce Gabbana. <laughs> <laughs> no? Okay. But you have to take a drum and a little cymbal with you when you use mine, though. Okay, I'm ready. Mind if I push in your stool? Oh, that is bump. so not a pickup line. That is so like back up, bro. Yeah, that's what that means. Why do I push in your stool? That means back up, bro. Don't back up too far. No, back up far away. Yes, <laughs> into somebody. You else. go over there. <laughs> yes. It depends how drunk they are. No, no matter what, you go over there. So did you get to use my other one yet? No. <laughs> no, I haven't. <laughs> it's gonna happen. He's planning the right time. I uh, am. Yeah. I gotta make it. Happen. He's gotta pick and choose. Yep. All right. Well, we'll see you guys next week. Thanks for joining us. Tell your friends and come by and see us next week. And come back tomorrow for Dear Dad. That's right. Oh, and Nerdgasm will be back next week, uh, right? No Dear Dad tomorrow. Oh, no Dear Dad no tomorrow. No Dear Dad tomorrow. Matt's show is gonna be next on Friday. Okay. All right. Sounds good. Okay. We'll see you guys next week. See you later. Bye.